if you want to upload data to an Ocean Files property or to an image block or to a video block or whatever block that supports adding files in Notion, you can now do that natively. For example, here is a database and let's say this is a database of companies and I want to upload company logos in here in the files and media property. So I can do that via the API and the upload will be stored in Notion and I can upload that same file into multiple properties or blocks in Notion. So if I run this scenario, which I'm going to explain later, you will see that this property will get populated with my file, for example, an Excel file here. And this file is now stored in Notion. It is not a link to the original file. It's actually uploaded in Notion as if, as a user, I come here and I do add file or image. Same thing, but done via the API. In this video, I am going through how to upload files to Notion blocks that support file upload and Notion properties that support files upload. There are three steps to the process of uploading a file to a Notion block that accepts files. The first step is you need to create a file upload. So this is a new object in the Notion API that uploads the file to Notion and it makes it available to add to any block in Notion that supports uploading a file. So once you create a file upload, you get a unique ID and the URL of the file. You will use the unique ID to upload the file here. So you send the binary file to Notion using multi-part slash form data in your API request. And finally, you attach the file to the block or to the property in Notion. And for this, you just use what we had until now. For example, you can use an update database item endpoint. You can create a database item. You can append a block, an image block, for example, to a page and upload your file there. You can update the block and so on. So you can see that you can reuse the same file upload ID across multiple pages of blocks. So that file gets stored within Notion itself and then you can upload it into multiple places using the same upload ID. So these are the three steps of the process. And you also need to know that you can upload the file directly with this three-step process or you can upload a file indirectly, meaning getting an external file and then going through the same exact process. But this time you upload a file that was previously stored externally. So you upload it via a URL as opposed to sending multi-part form data in your API request. So let's look at each step in here. And I've set up this make scenario as a test that I showed you in the intro of this video. You can see here I'm using the HTTP module in make, which you can find here by typing HTTP. And then the action is make a request because we want to make a request to the Notion API. The reason why I'm using this module is that there is no file upload module in make right now because Notion hasn't released this API endpoint yet. So it will take some time for that to be reflected in make. I could have also used the make an API called Notion module. Same thing. So same principles will apply to what I show you here. Of course, this is just one tool that we can use to do this, make, but we can do the same exact thing in any 10, in Zapier, in Pipedream, and whatever other tool of your preference, or directly interacting with the API in your favorite environment. So here I am demoing the scenario where I have a file in Google Drive. So I download that file using the download the file API endpoint from Drive. In this case, it's an Excel file here. It's called dates here. I mapped it manually, but you can map it dynamically if you have a more complex scenario. For example, storing a file in Google Drive in could be Dropbox, it could be Cloudinary or any file storage system that you use. So I download that file so I actually get the multi-part form data file that I can map to Notion later in the subsequent steps. And then I use the Notion API to create a file upload. If you remember, that's the first step in the process. So in here, I make an API call to the endpoint that is slash file uploads. This is a POST request. I have my authorization token here, content type, Notion version, and in this case, there is no body, no query parameters 
it's just a file upload request that I make. So this outputs this kind of data when it runs. As you can see here, this is what the data looks like. I have the ID of the file upload, and this is what I will need in subsequent steps to actually upload the file. That is an upload URL, the expiry time, and other data. Now, the second step is to actually upload the file. So in here, I make a request to the file upload slash ID, and this ID is mapped from the file upload request that I created in the previous step. So in here, I map the ID from the output data and then slash send. So that's the API endpoint to use to upload a file. That's a post request, same headers. And then the body type will be multi-part form data here as per the documentation. I will upload a file. The key is file. And then the file is mapped from Google Drive. You can see the Google Drive output here is an actual file. There is the data here that is a buffer. And I can map that to upload directly the file to Notion. And that's what I do in here. So then when this runs, I get this kind of response. I get the file upload, same kind of response as before. I get the file name, the content type, etc. And now I can add that file to a Notion property. I could also add it to a Notion block, as I said before, to a file block, for example, image, video block, or whatever file type you're working with. In this case, I want to update a database item. So in here, I'm going to update pages. Here is the page ID. This is hard-coded, but realistically, in this scenario, would be dynamic from previous steps. And that it's a patch request because I'm updating a database item. And in the body, which in this case, it's a JSON body, I upload, I update the files and media property, which is of type files. That's the representation of the file property notion. This will be the file upload here. And then the file upload gets the ID of the upload from the previous step and the file name from the previous step here. So file name is right here and ID is right here. And this gets me the output that I showed you in the intro. So uploading the file natively within Notion, just as a user, I would do that from the Notion interface. Same thing, but this time it is automated. Sometimes you might have files that are larger than 20 megabytes. When that is the case, you can split the file into multiple parts and follow the documentation to upload each part separately to make sure that you can upload the entire file into Notion successfully. So the documentation here goes in depth into the specifics. You can see here you can break down the file into multi-part mod and then follow the same steps, but then include some other parameters such as the number of parts needed and the other parameters that were also present in the example that I showed you. Then it will send each file part separately. So one request per file part that you just created. And then you upload the file with the complete URL here as you can see. Other times, instead of attaching the actual file, the multi-part data file, you might want to upload the file into Notion from a URL because maybe you can't get the actual file. For example, if you use watch files in a folder or search for files, folders, and you don't want to download the file before uploading it to Notion, then you can do that. And you can just use the web content link from the Google Drive response to upload it into Notion. So you would follow the same steps so you create a file upload, you upload the file, and when you upload the file, you actually follow this documentation here. You need to include a mode of external URL, and then the external URL parameters should be a publicly accessible URL. So in Google Drive, it will be the web content link, and you will need to make sure that it is publicly accessible. And that would upload the file into Notion, which then you can reuse, just like before, into multiple blocks with the same file upload ID that you used here. And this concludes the overview of how to upload files to Notion via the API. If you have questions, let me know down below in the comments. This use case opens up pretty useful possibilities in my experience, because oftentimes Notion is used as a documentation tool, for example, and you want to sync data between Google Drive or Dropbox and Notion, or you want to do a one-time migration of data from one platform to the other. And until now, 
you would have needed to use a third party tool to store a file, make the URL publicly accessible, and then store that URL in Notion, while the file would not be stored in Notion itself. Now with this update, you can actually upload files into Notion as if natively uploaded by a user. And those files are permanently stored in your Notion workspace, which makes also returning files via the API easier. You will find relevant links in the description of this video. And if you want to contact me to work together, please use the link below to get in touch. For now, thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.